Hey there, folks. During the last episode of the Hunky Vape Global 20, 440 lives were lost from combustible tobacco smoking. And once again, zero lives were lost from nicotine vaping. Combustible tobacco continues to kill one person every five seconds and is going to kill half of all smokers. 70% of them want to quit smoking and flavored vaping is five times more effective than any other nicotine replacement therapy or any prescription drug for smoking cessation. Even smokers with no intention to quit have been scientifically proven to stop smoking by daily using a flavored vape. And the more enjoyable the flavor is for that smoker, the more likely they will not smoke another cigarette. The longer a person vapes, the more likely they will never smoke again. So ultimately, every minute, the vaping is not widely adopted for smoking cessation, contributes to the 12 lives lost. Every minute of every hour of every single day. That's 17,280 people every single day lost to smoking. And what's even more shocking, in the three weeks since the last episode aired on January 14th until today, February 4th, 362,880 people died from smoking because they didn't switch to vaping. So my message this week is, don't look around because I'm sure you know someone who smokes and it's about to get a whole lot worse. All because Puritan prohibitionists in anti-nicotine zealots have doubled down on the crucifixion of vaping. Just when countless vape shops are getting out of the industry due to burdensome and crippling regulations. Last episode, I briefly reported on exactly that. I said it's exit stage left for a veil vapor. What was once a thriving vaping heavyweight is now thrown in the towel on brick and mortar retail, closing 100 stores in a dozen states and is still in the process of selling off their assets. Between the U.S. vape mail bans, the FDA debacle of the PMTA marketing orders, and countless other regulations making it impossible to fully comply with the laws, all of these stores are closing and leaving ex-smokers without a retail location to purchase the vaping products they need to stay away from combustible tobacco. Avail Vapor started in 2013 and spent over $10 million to get regulatory approval from the FDA. They even began delving into CBD and were planning on selling marijuana growing supplies once the laws legalizing that went into full force next year. But the burden of regulatory compliance continues to force them to get out of the industry. And it's not just them. Hundreds upon hundreds of other vape shops are now planning their industry exit strategy. This has been going on for months upon months, and none of this has changed. But while I was sick with COVID, the misinformation campaigns against vaping bloomed like a Christmas cactus. It's almost like the ant all got a massive cash infusion while we weren't looking. So my advice is, don't look around. Because if you did, you'd see all the news that I wasn't able to report, but happened anyway while we weren't looking. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape, Global 20 Vape Science Advocacy and News for the week ending February 4th, 2022. Hey there, folks. I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer. I really don't. And I'm really glad that you stuck around because there's so much news to report that nothing is going to get the coverage that it deserves. But in the same token, 
nothing is going to be ignored until we get caught up with what's going on right around us every single day. So let's dive right into it. First and foremost, a bit of good news before we start wading neck deep in cigarette butts. British Vaping Association, UK Via, expects a busy year for the vaping industry, as it's announced several major undertakings for the upcoming year. The year starts off with the release of its first economic impact report to highlight the significant contribution the vaping industry has to the UK economy and will support engagement with policymakers and the media. They're also planning an upgrade campaign aimed at raising awareness of the important role vaping can play in reducing inequities across UK. In addition, the group intends to build on the UK healthcare campaign launched last year, which includes the development of a dedicated online advice center for healthcare professionals and smoking patients. So for those of you in the UK, well, you can look forward to even more support of vaping as the UK vaping prescriptions are going to expand the industry and drive even more smokers to find the right product to help them quit their deadly habit. Meanwhile, in China, electronic cigarettes pop a squat while waiting for relevant national standards and management measures to fully implement on their new types of tobacco products. If you recall from last year, China Tobacco took over the vaping industry in December and they released their draft for comment on the measures for the administration of the electronic cigarettes. Long story short, in the next six months, you're gonna see a rapid stratification of the vaping industry in China. Big players will continue their exponential growth, while small players are either gonna be brought into the fold or simply culled from the herd. For the average vape consumer, this market takeover by China Tobacco will see significant standardization based on industry required regulations in the country where you live. And what was once an inevitability is now being rapidly adopted. And don't be surprised by new market education or data collection to maximize your consumer satisfaction. And it's also going to shape a more effective marketing strategy for these companies that are going to grow. But it's not all cherries and rainbows. In China, the same Delta 8 vapes that are being used by vape shops all around the world, especially here in the United States, to prop up sales while waiting for legalized recreational marijuana, well, they're gonna bite the heads off of some people along the way. Synthetic cannabinoids have been added in the supplementary catalog of controlled varieties of non-medicinal narcotic drugs and psychoactive substances in China. That's a mouthful, but ultimately it means that the synthetic CBD stuff that we take for granted as not being under the regulations, well, for those of you in China, they are in the regulations now and they are being treated the exact same as heroin. This change has already started to flood the Chinese district courts and is soon going to be flooding their prisons because somebody that's trafficking this Delta 8 stuff gets seven years in prison for simply profiting 1,000 yen. Moving on. The UK Standards and Goods Administration is continuing to crack down on thousands of fake cigarettes and e-cigarettes as residents around the UK are reporting shops selling vapes to kids. And to help mitigate the black market, which obviously exists, and all these counterfeits are obviously out on the market, and they're rampant everywhere, disposable e-cigarette maker Geek Bar launches their new packaging to crack down on non-compliant products. More like it's gonna allow retailers and you, the consumer, to easily verify these products are either legitimate or counterfeit. Here's a picture of the old and the new design for you. And you know, while I applaud Geek Vape, 
slash geek bar, trying to make legitimate products easier to identify as authentic. We all know that as long as somebody can make a buck, they're going to find a way to get cheap products and sell them as legit. Kind of makes you wonder, if they have this problem in the UK where vaping is widely adopted to help smokers quit, how bad is the problem of counterfeit products? Like here in the US, or in other countries like India, where it's banned altogether. It's just more proof that prohibition and disproportionate regulations only drive a thriving black market. And overregulation only compromises product safety for the consumer. Well, speaking of the United States, Connecticut governor reiterates flavored e-cigarette ban is to be expected within the next month. Last year, Connecticut governor Ned Lamont pushed Philip Morris to move its headquarters from New York to Stamford, Connecticut. And now, with the 2022 legislative session just weeks away, Lamont said he's committed to backing a flavor ban in Connecticut. Is that a coincidence? Well, I don't think so. Speaking of Philip Morris, I should probably remind you once again about their patent war with British American Tobacco and the resulting consequence that ICO's Heat Not Burn is no longer allowed for sale in the United States because of this patent war. Heat Not Burn eliminates combustion and the byproducts of combustion that kill people every single day. That's obviously a health benefit for anyone with a little bit of common sense. But because of corporate patent disputes, the public health suffers as these products are no longer allowed for sale in the United States. And you know what? This corporate war isn't limited to the United States. China's far core technology has sued Wiki technology for alleged infringement of the V4 series of transparent atomizers. Apparently, it's a blatant copy of the Relics Unlimited and the Relics Phantom, which received patent authorization from China in June. And Fogcore Technology is seeking a total compensation of 5.1 million yen. Another shocking report from Bluehole.com in China. Shenzhen UL has been fined 5.12 million yen for trading foreign exchange in a disguised form. Long story short, people, if you're a business in China, you're only allowed to exchange currency at a designated foreign exchange bank. And the fine is 30% of the amount traded. So you can do the math if you want to know how much currency they actually traded in disguised form. Moving on to Oregon, where stores must now pay and register to sell tobacco and e-cigarette products. This is the first of many stories where laws that were passed last year while we weren't looking are now going to be going into effect as of January 1st. Prior to January 1st, Oregon was one of only seven states that didn't require a tobacco retail license of some sort. Now, Oregon retailers must cough up a $953 annual license from the Department of Revenue to legally sell tobacco products. Supposedly, the fee is only going to be used to cover the cost of running the licensing program and conducting inspections. And the irony is that if a business is licensed under the Oregon Liquor and Cannabis Commission or the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program to sell cannabis vaping products, well, they don't need to get another license. Tribal lands are also exempt from this license under multiple federal statutes. And speaking of Oregon, Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids has ranked Oregon number one in funding tobacco prevention and cessation programs, spending 93.9% .9 of the CD recommended funding amount. They obviously don't care about how many people quit smoking or how successful these programs are, just in how much money they spend on them. 
Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids isn't the only one handing out grades to states. The American Lung Association aims its sights on Georgia by giving them four Fs and a D. The primary reason for the failing grades in Georgia is that it has the second lowest tobacco tax at 37 cents per pack and hasn't increased them since 2003. If it were actually smoking that was causing these failing grades, you know, I probably wouldn't have even covered this story. But the reality is the American Lung Association doesn't care about smokers. Well, not as much as they care about vaping. The entire propaganda in this article, over 95% of the content, doesn't talk about tobacco combustion. They only talk about youth vaping. And vaping is not smoking. Georgia received an estimated $392,200,000 in revenue from the Tobacco Master Settlement Payments and Tobacco Taxes in 2020, but only spent $750,000 on tobacco prevention programs. And looking at the propaganda that they put out there, less than 5% of that money was actually spent on tobacco prevention. What did they actually spend it on? You guessed it. Vaping misinformation. Roughly $37,000 out of $392.2 million was actually spent to reduce smoking rates. 37000 out of $392 million. The rest of it was either spent on misinformation about vaping or other pet projects that the state decided was more important than the lives of their residents. Moving on, before the truth butter really starts to flow, because I need to tell you about crack pens for cokeheads. Cocaine e-cigarette could help people struggling with addiction. Vaping cocaine has been studied by toxicologist Fabian Steinmetz and the addiction research professor Hino Stover, and they say such a device could mitigate the harms of smoking cocaine by reducing the risks of overdose and death and they may help people eventually find treatment when and if they're ready for it. This is all part of the harm reduction principle of safe supply and mimics the University of British Columbia's safe supply vending machines in Vancouver, Canada. Yeah, you heard that right. Using a touchscreen and a biometric scanner, patients can readily pick up drugs several times a day out of a vending machine. In the United States so far, I've seen half a dozen news reports of fentanyl vaping overdoses. All of them were initially labeled as mysterious teen vaping incidents at schools that required the police, ambulance, and hospitalization. Or, in one case, a coroner response. Yet every single one of these articles in the paper eventually revealed themselves as tainted vapes with fentanyl. And here in Canada, you can get into a program to opt for a safe supply out of a vending machine. You know what? This is harm reduction epitomized. And now researchers are evaluating a crack pen to make illegal drugs safer for those that are actually addicted to them. Kind of ironic, considering as of February, all arrests ended in Oregon for possession of small amounts of hard drugs. People caught with heroin, cocaine, LSD, or any other illegal drug now only gets a civil citation and a $100 fine, which is completely waivable if the offender agrees to a free assessment at a drug addiction and recovery center. But if you want a nicotine vape, you have to visit a specialized shop that now must cough up a grand for the privilege of selling you a product to quit smoking. They legalized all drugs to end the stigmatism, yet ex-smokers are still getting stigmatized for using a safer harm reduction product. I'm gonna be honest with you folks. I hate calling vaping the safer harm reduction product. Yeah, it's technically true. 
but the implication is it's going to harm you. Personally, I think there's a bigger chance of harm riding a bus to central Philadelphia or walking on the sidewalk in some of the shady parts of most of the towns that we all live in than you'd ever get from a nicotine vape. You know what? Vaping technology is like any other technology out there. A modern vehicle is magnitude safer than a classic car. But walking could be safer than either of these pieces of technology if the driver's intoxicated or if they're reckless. You could drown in a bucket of water, but I don't hear anybody running campaigns to ban or tax buckets of water because of the harm that they might cause. Anyway, sorry, I'm in one of them rare moods today. And I apologize, but it's been way too long since I put one of these out, so please bear with me. I've got other stuff that you guys all need to hear about. The vaping industry in South Africa has come out against the National Treasury's plans to tax e-cigarettes. They urged the government to take its vaping regulations to Parliament and enable role players to make a contribution in how and what way these all things should be regulated. I'd tell you more about it, but there's no way that I can subscribe to every publication that decides to slap up a paywall. So if you wanna support getting full access to these articles, there's a link to the Hunky Vape Patreon page in the description below. And I promise any donation made to that is going to be used to create better content on this channel and nothing else. Moving on to Russia, where a 12-year-old boy dies and a teen girl is in a coma from poisoning after vaping together during a sleepover. Three kids were found unconscious by Anastasia's grandmother in the morning, and the police are now investigating to determine if negligence was a factor in the death of Dennis Schneider. Social media postings from Victoria state that she vapes all day until she gets sick. So now, these three kids and their lovely overnight sleepover have prompted demands for tougher controls on vaping to protect young Russians. Don't look around to find out what these kids put in their vape. And don't look around to find out how these kids got a hold of a vape in the first place, or who provided the drugs, or why they were allowed to post on social media that they vape all day long until they get sick, or why they were unintended long enough for this to even happen. No, they're not gonna look around. They're simply going to call for more regulations that isn't gonna stop idiots from doing idiotic things. So let's move on to some science and the American Council on Science and Health. Secondhand vaping risks don't justify public e-cigarette restrictions. You know, Cameron English, we've covered multiple posts from your website, and I totally applaud you for your efforts to rebut reckless conclusions and tainted studies. However, I loathe when educated people admit culpability where none exists. Secondhand vaping is like smelling someone's bad breath. Yeah, technically, you could get some of the exhaled bacteria from the guy with the bad breath, but it's so minuscule and so cockeyed what the hell were you doing getting that close to somebody that you could smell their bad breath in the first place? It's the same thing with vaping. Secondhand vaping is not a real phenomenon. And it has no particulate matter in it that could hurt somebody. This subject has already been studied to exhaustion and even the CDC determined detectable levels do not exist for most items that they tested for. And the one levels that they did detect was nicotine, but it was detected at 0 0.069 or 0 0.8 
micrograms. Micrograms are not even worth mentioning. Anyway, this was all done at an old style juice bar where a customer tried flavored juice and literally blew clouds into the testing machine. We haven't seen this kind of a vape shop in years. And by the way, we've talked about this CDC NIOSH report on a couple other occasions. Well, there's a link in the description below if you want to actually go and take a look at what the OSHA inspection revealed at this old school vape shop. But I'll save you the trouble. There was hardly anything that they could even detect with their machines. Everything fell below the detectable range, let alone get anywhere near OSHA limits for exposure. And if they don't reach OSHA limits for exposure, how the hell are people supposed to be getting sick from any of this stuff? It doesn't exist. I'm tired of this industry always fighting things that are so stupid. It doesn't exist. I'm the hardcore vapor that constantly chugs clouds all day long. If somebody was going to get sick from vaping, it would be me. No, vaping has only helped me because I don't smoke and it helped me get over COVID, but that's a different topic. It's kind of obvious. If you walk down a sidewalk and have a diesel powered vehicle drive by, I guarantee you, you're going to be exposed to more significant harm than what these nincompoops are calling secondhand vape. Why are we constantly allowing the ants to corral vape advocates to argue the minutia? Don't look around, folks, because if you do, you'll see it everywhere. Outright lies and distorted truths plaster terrifying headlines founded on utterly false propaganda. Then simpleton politicians listen to chump dimwit arguments and create useless borderline or outright harmful legislation to solve a problem that doesn't really exist. And that's the reason all these vape shops are closing. That's the reason all these ex-smokers are soon going to be without the products they need to stay away from deadly combustible tobacco. We're forcing them like a nanny to give up a habit that doesn't cause them any harm. Just like in New Jersey, where vape shops are now required to carry and sell nicotine gum or other nicotine replacement therapy products. Kind of idiotic if you think about it. The whole reason for going into a vape shop is to get an alternative source of nicotine. Well, I hold this bottle up, but it doesn't have anything in it because I've already given up my nicotine. That's the whole point of going to a vape shop is so that you can find an alternative nicotine product that is actually enjoyable enough to use so you don't smoke. But now these vape shops are now required to go and purchase nicotine gum or lozenges or sprays and sell them in the vape shop because that makes a whole lot of sense. Because now these vape shops have another burdensome regulation that's gonna require them to go get these gums. And when nobody buys them and they are past their expiration date, they have to write it up as a loss and go get another pack to put on the shelf to sell. Because that makes a lot of sense. When are lawmakers actually going to write a law that does make sense? Maybe if they were to require anyone selling combustible tobacco to sell a safer alternative, like a vape that's proven more effective than these stupid gums and patches and sprays, why don't they require smoke shops to sell vaping products? No, that's not what they do. Despite being proven five times more effective than nicotine replacement therapy or prescription smoking cessation products. And if you're talking about a closed tank disposable system, they're still three times more effective than gums, patches, and sprays. Require those products or these products to be sold next to combustible tobacco. But to make a vape shop have it 
is preposterous. And anybody with some common sense can realize that. The FDA did approve one product for vaping. And there's no reason why that couldn't be mandated in the store. If Anyway, I don't mean to be in this kind of a mood today, and I apologize to y'all. We already know that the FDA approved a vaping product because it's appropriate for the protection of public health. And I already talked about it on this channel on how horrible that product is. Well, now the issue's in the courts. The Fifth Circuit and the Eleventh Circuit of federal courts are hearing these manufacturers argue their case and get the FDA to actually look at their submission and not just blanket deny everything because they didn't have a longitudinal study that wasn't a requirement in this whole process until a year after the deadline. But the way it looks right now, both of these look to force the FDA to actually take into consideration the data that was submitted to them. Is it gonna happen? Only time is gonna tell. But, like I said, as it looks, Biddy Vapor and Triton Distributions are gonna get their chance to prove their products are the same, if not better, for public health than the one the FDA already authorized from Big Tobacco. Don't look around, folks, because a little common sense and reasonable logic would dictate most, if not all, of these products should have gotten FDA marketing orders. All of these products are sold in specialized adult-only businesses who are legally required to verify age of their customer. So why are they required to prove the marketing of their products? What other product in existence does the manufacturer of that product need to prove that their products are safer than lighting something on fire and breathing that in? Whatever happened to common sense in this country and in this world? Well, don't look around, folks, because the facts are plain as daylight from the sun. And what did I see when I looked around this last week? Well, Colorado legislature is ready to take on the fight over flavored smoking cessation. They're calling it a flavored tobacco ban. But I can't call it that because... There is no tobacco product or derivative in my vape. And in my mind, it would be like calling flavored coffee ban a flavored cherry ban. There's no cherry in coffee, but technically a coffee bean comes from a cherry blossom. So maybe they'd call it a flavored tropical shrub ban. Regardless. The ban is completely nonsensical if you look around. Yet that's not what's going to stop them from trying to ban it. And it's not going to stop the average person out there from believing this misinformation that is constantly surrounding us. And there aren't enough of us out there fighting to correct the misinformation. Just like in Malaysia, who is now proposing a vaping ban for anyone born after 2005. Yeah, the ban also includes heat not burn products as well as combustible cigarette smoking. But it essentially means that a Malaysian who is 17 year old today will never be allowed to legally buy a vape. Don't look around folks because prohibition doesn't work. We know it doesn't work. Everybody knows it doesn't work, but it's not gonna stop these people from creating these laws trying to prohibit people from accessing them. And what's that gonna do? That's gonna create a black market where the supply of a safe product that is made to industry standards, that's not an option anymore. When they make prohibition a reality, safe supply goes out the door. So I fully understand harm reduction and why Canada is talking about putting crack pens in vending machines. Are you really caring about what people's lives are like? 
Do you care about whether somebody lives or dies? It's that simple. But in five years, when the percentage of the population illegally starts smoking, and then wants a relatively safe alternative to eliminate 99.5% or 99.9% .9 of the cancer risk from using that black market combustible tobacco product, they're not gonna be able to because it's gonna be illegal to use any product. Well, except for the pharmaceutical products that don't actually work, but have government approval for you to take. Maybe the Malaysia's Ministry on Health should read the next article we're about to cover. Stop smoking. Slowly wean yourself from the drug with a vape. Smoking comes with a host of negative effects on the body and kills one person every five seconds. Vaping is a healthier alternative to smoking and offered to smokers wishing to significantly reduce, if not reverse, the harms combustible cigarettes created. Don't look around, because the truth is out there. All of us know someone who smokes, and all of us know someone who is able to stop smoking with vaping. Don't look around, folks, because it's obvious. Ants never look around, and Bloomberg never looks around to see the damage that he and the World Health Organization is doing with prohibition and excessive taxes which disproportionately impact the lowest ranks of society the most. For those of you out there to think nothing is happening on the vaping front lines, it's obvious you aren't looking around. Because every day, thousands upon thousands of dollars are used to spread misinformation and fighting against the single best way to accidentally quit smoking. At the forefront this year has been the American Lung Association handing out an F to every state who greedily takes hundreds of millions in tobacco taxes and gladly spends millions in tobacco master settlement income on anything but smoking cessation. Here's another article about Vermont getting an F. They got $103,400,000. But only spend eight million on tobacco prevention and control. So what is the state doing about them getting an F from the uh, American Heart Association, the American Lung Association, or any one of these do-good organizations that are maliciously lying and distracting people, telling them half truths? Well, Vermont is advancing Senate Bill 24, an act to ban flavored tobacco products and e-liquids. Is this bill going to help any smoker stop smoking? Or is it simply going to keep these smokers smoking combustible tobacco longer? Don't look around because the answer is very obvious. The only flavored tobacco product is the one getting people to stop smoking. Banning that is like banning brakes on vehicles to lower traffic fatalities. Don't look around folks because e-cigarette use may lead some to quit traditional cigarettes. National Institutes of Health study shows those who were using e-cigarettes daily at the end of the study were eight-fold more likely to quit cigarettes altogether. They were also almost tenfold more likely to stop smoking cigarettes every day. Use a vape every day and you will quit smoking. It's that simple but they keep trying to ban it and tax it and add more regulations to minimize the number of places where you can get it. Don't look around for the answer because I know that you guys can all see the obvious. Would the global e-liquid market be worth $3.4 billion if vaping didn't work to stop smoking? Don't look around folks, because you know the answer. Smoking costs London, England, three billion pounds a year. So it's quite obvious why they promote vaping for smoking cessation. Don't look around. Vaping causes smoking cessation and nothing more. 
New propaganda headline from Hawaii. Hawaii lawmakers finally ban flavored tobacco products. Why do they call it a tobacco product when there's no tobacco in it? Senate Bill 3118 is supported by the American Heart Association, despite having any studies whatsoever showing that vaping causes heart problems. In fact, vaping causes people who smoke and stop smoking to get their heart to improve. Any medical conditions that they had with their heart get better when they stop smoking and start vaping. So why is the Heart Association not supporting vaping? And why would they keep saying nicotine is highly addictive chemical when science has proven, multiple science studies have proven, it's not a highly addictive chemical like they demand to be putting on all these packages. Science has already proven that nicotine by itself cannot addict anyone to it. Nicotine needs other chemicals that are only present in combustible cigarette smoke to become addictive. Yeah, nicotine by itself can be habit forming, just like your tea or your coffee, but it is not addictive like they want you to believe. Don't look around, folks, because the truth is out there and they want you to ignore it. Legislators in Washington state at the state at the State Health and Long-Term Care Committee had a public hearing last week on Senate Bill 5768 to limit nicotine content. 67 people signed up to go to this online hearing to support this bill and limit nicotine content. 275 people showed up at the hearing, the online hearing to oppose the bill. Anybody could attend. The numbers are quite obvious. Will Washington be the first state to cap nicotine content in the United States, despite the significant opposition? Don't look around, folks, because you might not like what you see. A World Cancer Day. Plea from Yorkshire to Shajid Javid the Secretary of State for Health and Social Care in the United Kingdom. Level up today to save lives as COVID backlog grows. Health Secretary Sajid Javid recently announced that it's time to launch a war on cancer and that he's working on a new vision to radically improve the outcomes for cancer patients. Yorkshire Cancer Research has been on the front lines of the war on cancer for nearly 100 years. Yet the health minister cut public health budgets, particularly in the areas of Yorkshire, which have been hardest hit by diminished funding for stop smoking services. Deprivation and poor health go hand in hand, regardless of what part of the world you live in. And compared to the most affluent areas, the most deprived areas have more cancers diagnosed, fewer diagnosed early, more deaths from cancer, and lower chances of surviving a year after diagnosis. Mr. Javid recently called the health gap between the richest and the poorest a moral outrage. And Yorkshire Cancer Research sincerely agrees. Yorkshire is the third most deprived region in England. And many of our cities and towns have high levels of local deprivation. Inequality is causing the deaths of thousands of people in Yorkshire. Our analysis has estimated that if all areas of Yorkshire were equal to the most affluent areas in the region, 2,000 lives could be saved every year from cancer. This plea from Dr. Catherine Scott the chief executive of Yorkshire Cancer, continues. And if you want to read it in its entirety, there's a link in the description below. But this message is clear. If you declare war on something, then you must fully commit all resources needed to win the war. And if you want smokers to stop smoking, you must allow them to have the tools that they need and the funding to make it happen. 
Don't look around, folks. Because if you do, you're going to see the hypocrisy. And you're going to be living in George Orwell's 1984. The Ministry of Health wants to end cigarette smoking by 2030, but cuts funding to stop smoking services. The Ministry of Health wants to wage a war on cancer, but cuts funding to the cancer workforce. Diagnosing cancer early is the easiest and best way to improve outcomes for people. Just like flavored vaping is the best tool to quit smoking. Why are they doing everything possible to cut the tools needed to win the war? Don't look around. You already know the truth. Opposition to vape bill may exacerbate smoking, top Filipino doctor says. Leading Filipino doctors who are involved in treating smokers warned that the opposition to the vape bill may contribute to the widespread smoking epidemic, which is a leading cause of death in the country. The vape bill is clearly a big win for public health. Those who would like to ban vaping may indirectly be supporting smoking, and we don't want that, said Dr. Fernando Fernandez, Secretary General of the Asia Pacific Dental Federation and the past president of the Philippine Dental Association. Don't look around, folks, because the truth is out there, and they don't want you to see it, and they don't want you to pay attention to it. That's why it's your time to become an advocate. That's it for this episode. I'll be back next week with the next one. Stop.